Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're going to be taking a look at Vegas Post. Specifically, we're going to be looking at a neat way to surround something. So all the time when I'm editing videos, I want to circle things that are currently important on the screen or separate things off. And there are various ways to do this. I want to show you a way of doing it with Vegas effects that I really like. So go to the clip you want to have something circled. So here, I'd like to highlight this area up here. Right click on it and go to Edit in Vegas Effects. Vegas Effects will pop up, give it a second, and it will load up with your image. So here we are, and we've got our um, area that we'd like to control right here. And it's really fast and easy. So what I want to do is I want to create a path that it's going to follow. And I could use the pen tool if my path is kind of complicated. But here, it's just a square. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the mask tool right here and click and drag. And it will create a copy here of just the thing that we want to have selected. Now, we're going to need two of these tracks. So I'm going to click this track and hit Control D for duplicate. And on this track, I should have done this before I made the mask, but we're going to select the mask and delete it. So there is a track beneath with our stuff, and then there's a track above. This is the track that's going to have the mask. And if I were to click and move it around, you can see that's our mask that we have. So we have this just this one little piece. Now, when you do this duplication, it keeps the audio on both clips. And... This is something that you usually don't want because then you end up getting like doubled up on audio and stuff. So I'm gonna set the audio to minus 60, so to zero. So only the bass clip has the audio now. And on this track, we're gonna add an effect. We are going to add a, um, a stroke. And let's go for the vector stroke, why not? So we'll just double click and it will add that to our effect here. Now, it's going to follow a path, and in this case, we're going to go with um, mask one, just our default mask that we have selected. It is gray. I don't want gray. Let's go with a orange-ish color. Why not? That's kind of nice. And to make it move around, there are these start and ends, and it's going to use this mask as the path. So if we change the end, it'll rotate off from the end. So we could sort of view the end as the start, or we could view, you know, the start is the start. So it's up to you. Let's use the start. So to do so, we are going to move the start all the way to the end so that it's essentially zero. We're going to click to add a keyframe and then we'll scroll ahead and how far and how quick you want is going to be up to you. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to add another keyframe here. So if we want to see our keyframes, I believe we could just double click and have them show up we'll come down here so here's our one keyframe where's our other did i not set one i guess i didn't set one so let's set one here and then we'll move forward in time and we'll set another one and there we go and so now it'll show up there's already some verb going so it gets a bit further on the verb and we'll move this one a bit closer just so the effect happens a little bit quicker and if you wait for a second uh, it'll start rendering right from where the playhead's at, so you'll get a smooth playback. So you can see the blue line shows this. There's already some verb going, so it gets a bit. And we've got ourselves, um, it's selected. Now, let's go ahead and change a couple properties here. We're probably gonna wanna change the width, so we'll bring that down so that it's not so big. And if you combine this with motion tracking and a couple other things, you can make something where an arrow follows a highlighted selection that you're you're doing so that you can easily combine this so this is the vector stroke option there is another option say you want to have this have like a glow effect we could add effects after but there's actually a special version if we look up uh, glow or in fact um, if we look up path there is a neon path option and this will do the same thing as the uh, the vector stroke will except for we could use um, this sort of glow effect will be sort of built into it so let's toggle off the vector stroke for the moment and bring on the neon path. So the neon path has some very similar things uh, here. Let's go ahead and bring down the vector stroke so that these controls aren't all over the place. And here we could choose again our path from our mask. You could see it sort of showing up around it. So let's go path from, and we'll just leave it as mask because that's just our default there. 
we will go to our inner glow and we'll change the width to be much smaller because I don't want such a, a crazy big glow there. Uh, we'll change it to be orange again because orange is the best. To alter the length of the neon, there is no start and end. Instead, we have a extension. And so the extension moves around and there are various parameters here. There's a whole bunch. There's like, there's a lot to play with here. Uh, some of my favorites to go in for are changing the width, which is right here. So as we move this up, we can even change how bright that is. So we'll, we'll put it right around there. There's the fall off. I'm going to bring this way down so that we maintain that really bright edge. Maybe bring the width in just a smidge more. And we have some distortion options. These are kind of cool. So the distortion, if you bring this up a little bit, it'll begin to warp from where it's at. And so if we were to keyframe on, and we have these different modes, we have like heat, fluid, energy. Let's do energy. Why not? That seems kind of cool. Uh, let's go and automate the extension. We'll start it off at zero and then we'll move forward a little bit and have it come on. And then it will sort of move around there with the distortion. So let's let it render out a little bit. We'll hit play. There's already some verb going, so it gets a bit further on the verb. So that's the distortion. Now with the distortion, right, that's a little much. Maybe we dial it back so it doesn't leave the edges so much. Some verb going, so it gets maybe let it render some. It's a bit further on the verb. Maybe we actually get this pull movement it this way to make it move. Just that could be kind of a nice thing, a nice little touch coming on here. One last thing you can try out, and there's a bunch of things here that you could try out, but one that's kind of cool is you're gonna have this rotating effect where it sort of pulses around the side. And that's simply just by automating the extension moving around. So let's go ahead, let's reset this because I just moved it. Uh, we'll set an evolution here, um, a keyframe, and we'll move along. And we'll have it go around a bunch of times. I don't know, maybe like th three or four times. And now as it goes, we'll have this like rotating pulse around the thing that we want. And of course, we didn't have to use a rectangular mask. We could have used a circular mask. If we go ahead and play this, there's already, there's already some verb going. So it gets a bit further on the verb. Maybe we actually pull it this way to make it. So you can just make it a little more visually interesting than something that just sort of sits there along with the pulsing that it already has. So these like subtle variations really bring it up to just another visual, visually interesting notch. One other thing I should mention here is if you add more masks, they will share the same effects. Unless you duplicate this uh, layer and add separate effects to it, all the masks on this layer will have the same effects. So if I add a, another mask here, and I let's say I add a circular mask, and so let's go for an ellipse, and I add one around here, it will immediately gain the same properties. Maybe I should make this uh, a bit bigger something like that. So this will share the same effect. So if we let this go ahead and render out real quick, um, we'll see it sort of just do its thing. All right, here we go. There's already some verb going, so it gets a bit further on the verb. You can see that they Maybe both just actually... automatically do it. So there you go, a quick way of adding strokes to your footage and circling things. It's the way I like to do it, it's super fast. You just open up Vegas, circle the thing with a mask and then give it a path using vector stroke or neon path uh, there's actually some other options as well and you know you, you move on it's super fast so if you have any questions feel free to let me know subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day